and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today's first impressions video is focusing on a resin or I, I suppose I should strictly say multimedia kit um, which is the Atlantic Models HMS Consort which is um, a C-class destroyer or a CO-class destroyer um, so let's talk you through HMS Consort so HMS Consort is one of um, 32 C-class destroyers that were ordered by the Navy. Um, and actually she was ordered during the war years. Um, so um, uh, 1942, uh, laid down in 1943 and launched in 1944, although not commissioned until uh, after the war in, in um, March of 1946. Um, so you might be wondering why it's a CO class. You're used to um, hearing of A class, B class, so on and so forth. Well, the O is basically a subcategory. With that many um, ships being ordered, they're, they're sort of built in batches. And in fact, um, the CO is pretty much uh, identical to the preceding CH. So they just it's just a way of breaking up a um, certain number of ships being built. And uh, it's worth saying, um, now I've made the comment that the COs were identical to the CHs. Uh, my only caveat to that is, and I think some people um, don't necessarily fully understand this, um, very, very few ships are actually identical. And I'm not talking about um, design changes between sister ships being built. So there is differences between Tirpitz and Bismarck, for example. But... Um, there is a certain amount of liberty um, that's allowed by the um, shipyard. So it depends on who's building them. We discussed this when, when uh, we were building uh, the A-class destroyer. So HMS Antony and HMS Acasta were twins. They were built at the same shipyard and they were built identical. Um, but you could go and see another A-class destroyer that was built at another shipyard, and you'd find that the um, the vent for the um, for the ovens, for example, might be in a slightly different location. They all had slightly different ways of doing the minor details, I guess we'd call it. So fundamentally, they'd be the same. Um, at a distance, looking at them um, at sea, they'd look the same. But if you walk around the deck, you'd find that... Um, things were put in different positions, tie-off points and things were, were done slightly differently. So there was always differences with ships. However, um, the COs generally were the same as the CHs. So a steam turbine ship that could reach up to 36 knots at a push, but at a standard 20 knots, um, had a range of um, around 4,500 nautical miles or, or just a little bit more. Uh, and when uh, fully staffed, had a complement of 186 officers and ratings. So this particular ship is famous, um, actually, for want of a better word, because she's not particularly famous, but, but perhaps should be, um, for an incident that happened. Um, it's called the Yangtze incident. happened at China when she was trying to rescue the sloop Amethyst. And she took on 56 hits during that action, with um, 10 dead and 23 wounded. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So on this very day in 1949, um, the um, frigate HMS Amethyst um, was ordered to go and protect the British Embassy in uh, Nanjing. And on its way down river, it came under fire from uh, communist uh, Chinese forces uh, and in that process um, ran aground on a sandbank. And so HMS Consort was the first of three Royal Navy ships to attempt to go and refloat Amethyst. And to cut a long story uh, short, which was well followed in the media at the time, 
Amethyst eventually managed to slip her anchor and get down river under her own steam, again coming under artillery fire, but did manage to get to Nanjing and, and rejoin the fleet there. So I will read you basically what happened to HMS Consort. After Amethyst had run aground, um, she is dispatched um, to go and uh, put uh, Amethyst in tow and get her out of there, basically. Um, and this is an extract from Hansard, which is the notes made uh, about the Houses of Parliament's uh, speeches. So, it says, Vice Admiral Madden, the flag officer, second in command, Far East Station, ordered the destroyer HMS Consort, Commander Robertson, from Nanking to go to Amethyst's assistant and the frigate HMS Black Swan, Captain J from Shanghai to Qianyin, 40 miles downriver from the Amethyst. Consort reached Amethyst at about three in the afternoon and was immediately heavily engaged. She found the fire too heavy to approach Amethyst and therefore passed her at speed downriver. She turned two miles downriver and again closed on Amethyst to take her in tow but she again came under such heavy fire that she was obliged to abandon the attempt. Although she answered the shore batteries with her full armament and signalled that she had silenced most of the opposition, half an hour later her signals ceased, though in fact she was making a second attempt to take Amethyst in tow, having turned downstream again. This attempt also failed and she sustained further damage and casualties, during which her steering was affected. She therefore had to continue downstream out of the fire area. So if you want to know more about those events, um, there is lots and lots of uh, information about it on the internet and um, also on YouTube. There, I believe there's even a Mark Felton um, story about it. History done, let's talk about the kit a little bit more. So uh, when you buy uh, a model from Atlantic Models, they always come packed as you're about to see here um, so you get a very very sturdy cardboard box uh, which could take some proper bashes and the contents of the kit would be fine um, usually taped down in just to keep the lid in place um, but as you can see even with the tape off it's not going to come undone you've got to actually willfully undo the box um, and the way it's folded over means that the corners have lots of crush impact so it's really really good top-notch packaging um, we have on the front uh, a label uh, which tells you it's peter hall's atlantic model so um, you may recognize that logo um, if you've used white ensign etch because you'll find it's on uh, most of that etch i think peter hall was behind uh, white uh, white ensign models etch uh, whether he still is i'm not 100 percent sure uh, because that's now owned by uh, tom's model works in the u.s um, it tells us that it's a one to three fifty scale it says it's mixed media um, and that it's a model kit and it has uh, an atlantic model kit number of three five zero one three Now, when we open the box, we're greeted by... Now, I have been through this. I always do uh, as soon as I take delivery in case there's any issues. And there never has been from an Atlantic uh, models ship. And this is my fourth now. Actually, only the second I've bought direct um, because the other two I acquired by other means, shall we say. So, but this is typical of how they're packed. We've got an instruction sheet. We've got decals in a sealed protective bag. So that's better than a little bit of tissue paper over the top. And then we have all of these um, polystyrene chips protecting what's in the box. So we have resin and metal parts. We have the resin hull, and somewhere in here will be an envelope full of etch. And 
we go. Now, I couldn't get the etch back in the envelope, so what I did when I repacked this was I put the card that comes with the etch underneath, put the etch on top, put the envelope on top of that to protect it. Um, and that will be everything that's in the box. So let me deal with these. And let's have a look at the instructions. So our instructions are A4, colour, stapled together but separate sheets. So if you want to put them in a binder or a folder while you're building, you can do. And then when you open them up, if you've used white ensign um, instructions before, then these will be quite familiar. It's the same format of drawings. And then on the end, we have uh, a colour guide, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So right on the front, we have the Atlantic Models logo, uh, just telling you what kit it is. Um, and that it's a multimedia kit, so all the information that we had on the front of the box, and then we kick off with some history. So the history tells us um, uh, briefly what I've just told you. Then we have the ship specifications, um, and then we have a list of armaments. Um, and then right at the bottom here, this little uh, paragraph uh, is telling you um, to be careful that resin dust isn't good for you if you inhale it, so on and so forth. So that's, I like that because a lot of resin manufacturers do not mention the fact that resin is harmful for your health. Um, so uh, it's all well presented, easy to read. And then we have a, a part list. Um, so it shows our main resin parts, then our white metal parts, and it lists them out telling you what they are which is really handy so a lot of them you will uh, recognize funnel propeller so on and so forth uh, but it is handy that you've uh, got understandings of what some of the some of them are so if, if we take 17 for example it'll tell us that it's a single 40 millimeter bofus times four so you should have four of those Okay, as we turn over the page, the parts list continues. Um, and this is typical of Atlantic models. Um, you get um, a black and white image of the um, photo etch with the numbers on telling you um, what everything is and then listing them out. So we have 54 different parts on here. Um, some of which will be in pairs or multiples. Um, and then we have a section at the bottom that's called Other Instructions. And typically in here, it will tell you um, some uh, important extra information about the, the photo etch or the kit. And um, point eight here um, is talking about reference material. So that is really, really handy. Um, so... We'll have a look at the photo etch in a minute. Let's carry on with the instructions for now. So the way the instructions work is we have a clearly defined um, box which shows you the parts, gives you a part number and some directional arrows to show you where they go and then you'll have some written commentary and that commentary might say, ensure that you do part six before part five for, for a good fit and, and that type of thing. Uh, and some additional information. If you've got options, it might talk to you about the options. So you're clear what you're doing at every step. And what we can see in this first step is that the major resin parts are all being assembled. So what it does not do is give you... Um, um, a reference on when to paint and what colors to paint until you get to the end so you do have to do some cross-referencing um, it really does depend on the model builder how they want to go go forward so you may want to paint all that deck before you attach these parts or the modelers may want to attach the parts and then paint it although that can be a little bit challenging as 
the resin molded parts are, are quite comprehensive in their construction so they've got um, overhangs and bits and pieces that would get in the way of, of painting it so uh, you can also see that we've got a split hull here we've got a full hull or waterline option so that's really nice and that is typical of Atlantic model kits I've built um, so yeah very nicely done um, and it's very clear what's going on here um, we're taking these parts we're adding it to the hull and we're going to end up with that I mean the model model looks almost done <laughs> doesn't it without that um, but some of the parts that are being fitted here like the guns for example need some assembly first so that's where these come in so it tells you what you're assembling at the top so notice there's no numbers because this isn't necessarily a build sequence you can design your own build sequence and I personally really like that because I resequence model kit instructions all the time so it's much easier for me to come along and just go right I'm going to do the guns last and, and so on and so forth so 4.5 mark 5 single gun mount assembly we've got um, the parts called out there where we've got fold uh, photo etch it's showing us what it wants us to do as in fold that over before you mount it on there so you can see that their little uh, rocket racks or something it says fold the oh, flare rockets uh, flare rocket launch racks so you know exactly what you're doing and it's giving you the instruction step by step very difficult to make a mistake with uh, Atlantic instructions if you take the time to read everything before you go and um, you know there's not lots of reading to be done but what there is there is very pertinent to what you're trying to do then we've got the twin Bofus assembly um, and it's showing us there the um, photo etch for the framework and bits and pieces that go over the top uh, I'm guessing that's some form of range finding equipment um, assemble the radar antennas so yeah so a bit more complex as this is a post-war ship, a bit more complex than, than many ships have built in the past where Second World War ships have less equipment like radars, so less fine details. Um, uh, and again, it's talking you through that. So we've got the main parts, which could be resin and metal, um, and then you've got all this photo etch detail as well. So absolutely stunning. Then, when we flip her over, we've got some forecastle fittings. So we've got the anchor being made out of two parts, um, folding it over for thickness, and then we've got this little rectangular bit at the bottom which gives you the, the right look. Um, and then that can be fitted into the uh, hull there. We'll have a look at the hull at the minute and see if we need to drill that through. Um, we've got photo etch anchor chain there. Um, it shows it as flat. I tend to twist mine. Um, usually you get enough um, chain in there to, to do this job, but also if you wanted to have chain running from the, hall, um, from the capstan through the horse pipe down to your seascape, if that's what you're doing, there will be enough in that length for that. So there's always extra chain in my experience. Um, then we've got the railings coming on and it's telling you to shape to fit. Uh, you will have, when we look at the photo etch, we will have um, railings that have been cut to fit, and then we'll have some stock railings uh, for other jobs uh, as we go through the build. Then we've got forward superstructure um, and its fittings, so guns, rafts, raft, uh, racks. Um, so uh, a little bit of photo etch there, but it's mainly components on that one. Um, then we've got the bridge uh, fittings and locations. So we've got some, we've got, a, that's really nice touch. Most model kits, plastic kits, would just leave that open. But we've got the um, tarpaulin roof going on there, which will be photo etch. Um, and we've got the uh, bridge windows there and various little photo etch fittings. 
Um, that looks like a searchlight. Um, it will tell me in here, but I'm, uh, I'd have to read it upside down. Funnel fittings. So we'll have a resin funnel, and then we've got all the various bits that are attached to it, including uh, some photo etch on the, on the funnel cap. So that should look really nice when done. Um, and then the amidships Carly raft rack. So that's going uh, around this gun platform here. And you can see you've got watertight doors and bits and pieces on there, as well as these um, guns. And as we flip over, we've got assembly of um, Bofus guns there, um, and then assembly of the platform for the Bofus with uh, more life rafts, lots and lots of life rafts on here, isn't there? We seem to be building those every other step. Um, then we've got the uh, antenna spreader, which is basically a little mast there, um, the radar assembly, and four mast top array assembly, which all looks suitably lovely. So that will be um, in a cross shape when assembled. Uh, gun platform access cat catwalks. So we've got some catwalks that connect the various parts of the ships to go on, um, and then some support framing. So very, very detailed. Um, but the assembly is well thought out, so it's showing you how that's done. And again, this isn't stepped, so you can choose to do this at any point that you like, uh, and it's talking you through what you need to do, so that's really, really good. Okay, lattice mast assembly. Um, and then in brackets it says scorpion. Um, so what have we got here? We've actually got four bits of photo etch rather than one thing that we fold in. So that'll be perhaps a little tricky uh, to build for some people. The secret to that is jigging it and uh, some very thin super glue, I think. Um, but we'll come to that when we come to build it. It's got the platform, then some of these parts that we've made. So you can see you might want to build that and place it before you build that. Um, then we've got more radar. I'm guessing that's telling us to use some strip or something like that. Um, but quite an assembly when it's done, quite delicate. That's probably one of the last things, if not the last thing that I'm going to do. Um, because you're just going to, you know, you're going to capture it on your jumper and wreck it, and then you're going to have to do a capsized version of the model. Um, okay, uh, boat davit assembly, which is basically folding them up. They can be tricky to to mount because they're so thin, um, but because they're being double thickness, that makes them a little bit easier than others have used by companies like Flyhawk, where they just have the single piece um, we've got the thwarts and bits going on the boat so that'll bring some realism to that um, and it has all the lifting tackle on the uh, on the davits as well which is nice and then it's showing you where to mount them so um, my experience is it's often easier to mount these onto the boat first and then mount the whole assembly um, onto the deck and try to get the boat into those davits once they're on. What happens if you try and put the boat into the davits because you've got to sort of swing it under is the davits just come off the deck. So uh, that that's how I go about it. But we'll talk about that when we build it. Um, and it's showing us the position of the dinghies there. And then as we flip over, we have um squid mortar assembly so if you are wanting to do the post um early 50s refit you've got that there to to go on and it's showing you where that goes on um and i've spread a fitting so probably want to do some reading through this and a little bit of research just to confirm if this configuration is the same pre-1950s 
I believe, and I've not read through all of this, but I believe that these particular destroyers change very little throughout their life, um, uh, from from when they were built to when they were scrapped. There wasn't much in the way of changes, so I think you're okay. But it's worth just doing that research, which has been referenced. And then our last diagram there is fitting the uh, shaft lines, propellers, and rudder. So on the very back page, we have the uh, painting guide, um, colour chart, uh, colour chart information, I guess. Um, and there's a little note there that I perhaps should have read, but haven't. Um, the paints referred to are the colour coat system that used to be owned by White Ensign Models uh, and is now uh, looked after by Sovereign Hobbies. And I think Sovereign Hobbies recently have downscaled their operation to just focus on um, the colour coat. Uh, enamel paint system. Now those paints are really high quality paints. I have quite a few of them um, and the paint matching is very very well done. But enamels is not for everyone so if you uh, want to use um, acrylics then uh, I personally find the life colour uh, paint system uh, a, a good alternative to uh, the enamel paint system you wish um, and we've got a very nice uh, looks like computer drawn image um, with those colors uh, put in so we can see there the the walkways depicted in a slightly different color that's not listed there um, so you've got your anti-fouling red um, you've got a black boot line which also isn't here you've got the dark green which is used for all the steel decks and then you've got the light Admiralty Grey, uh, and it gives you the colour coat tin number. Then listed out is the other colours um, used, so matte black and what they're used for. So horizontal from the top platform, gun barrel, uh, waterline boot topping, uh, funnel cap and grill. Now it says matte black there, I tend to do my boot in a, in a satin. Um, because it tends to be um, shinier, whether that changed at this period, don't know. Um, matte white, bronze for the propellers, obviously. Uh, burgundy red for the ship boat waterline. Okay, the, oh, ship's boat above the waterline. Um, tan brown for the carly rafts. Um, natural wood for various bits. And... And the cortisine um, linoleum, which is the uh, walking decks there, so uh, the rubberized anti slip um, deck areas. Um, so, very nicely laid out. We've got a top view which clearly shows all the decks and components in their different colors, and then you've got a side view. Um, what you don't have is um, a detailed view, but there is conversation in here that's telling you what to pay and what and as always look at your reference materials um, but most things are going to be in the light admiralty grey um, to, to be fair to it so i quite like that um, it's a nice single reference sheet and because these are all detachable um, if you put them in a, a double-sided clear folder you can flip through these uh, as you need through the build that's the instructions Let's have a look next at the decals. So our decal sheet comes well protected in this little Ziploc bag. And what we've got is the um, pendant, num pendant number. We've got depth markings. We've got the um, uh, hull uh, name. We've got the flags. We've got the um, smaller numbers there, and then we've got more depth markings. So you could do pretty much any of the um, ships in this class of destroyer from this one decal sheet. Um, and it has the depth markings, unlike a lot of other people's decals, trumpeter. Um, so really nice to see um, that we've got all the main stuff covered off there. Now, there is no um, warning signs and there is no um, uh, other deck markings such as um, gun radiuses and bits and pieces like that. Again, do your research, but you can get separately from Atlantic models 
um, decal sheets which cover off things like warning signs and bits and pieces. So once you know where these things go, you can get hold of them, but they're not for everyone. Um, and uh, I guess it keeps the cost of the uh, kit down. Um, resin kits are fairly expensive as it is. So uh, yeah, that does everything that you need um, at a top level and it's up to the individual how far they want to go. So yeah, um, the decals themselves, they do have a fair amount of uh, backing film. I don't know if we can pick that up on camera. Um, they do have a fair amount of decal film, but my experience is they go down very, very well. Um, and with a, a little bit of softening uh, liquid, you will not see that backing film at all. Uh, the only um, exception would be on the flags, but if you mount them onto some foil and then trim them afterwards, um, you've not got an issue. So the photo etch next. Um, and what we've got as I look at this is we've got railings, the second set of railings here the underneath. Um, not this set, this second row of railings is stock additional railings. This one's got slightly uh, damaged, but we can straighten that all right. It's not, it's not damaged, it's just shifted a little bit. Um, then we've got shaped railings underneath. We can see that these would probably be for uh, the bow because of the shape at the end. Um, and we've got the um, those items in and they're really nicely done. Um, then we've got more shaped railings. That looks like the bridge windows that we saw. Um, there's some nice detail on the um, davits there. That's our funnel top. That's our little um, canvas top for the bridge. And we can see that we've got um, some raised creases in there, but painted that should look really nice. Um, there's our four parts for our um, quite complex looking mesh mast. Um, and the various bits that we saw for building those up and the yard arms. That's our anchor chain and you can see it's got um, uh, quite a length to it there, so you've got plenty, and you've got stock ladders for things like uh, masts and um, running up platforms and that sort of stuff. So that's all just cut to length stuff, and you've got two different widths, so that's all really good. Um, interestingly, the two little crosses there, they're the tie downs for the two ships' boats, um, so you don't have to mess around cutting thin strips of. Uh, masking tape like I typically do, you're, uh, you've got them already prepared, so that's great. Some nice relief etching um, on the anchors there and on the, the mast and on the platforms, so you've got positive location points for other components. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice little set. It's not overwhelming, there's not too much to do, um, and it's not massive, and some of these details like um, the um, rudder and stuff for the ship's boats. You could even leave them off if you wish to. Um, some carriers needed to remove some of these. Some of these parts are very, very delicate. Um, the one thing I'll say about um, Atlantic etches, it's very fine. It is done with um, scale in mind. So uh, to get accuracy, you also get delicate. So do take care with it but that's a lovely lovely set of photo etch let's get you a bit closer to it and if you read the instructions it will tell you exactly where all of that goes only two lots of inclined ladders so not too much work on these most of this is cut it out and place it not much spend in there okay the hull so that gives you um, our length of our ship it's a, a nice size not too big for the shelf um, and this comes wrapped in bubble wrap um, and we've got two halves now my experience is um, that once you've tidied up the little um, little pips on there which are from the casting um, block or the casting process um, and you clean off the little bit of um, 
um, unevenness that's under under there, which is sort of left over from the casting once again. Once you've given that a gentle skim, these two halves will go together like you wouldn't believe. Better than any plastic kit, I assure you. I mean, you can see now how good that is. I'm not going to say that you're not going to need a little bit of filling because it's possible that you would. But if you take your time and sand it uh, and make sure that your sanding is nice and flat and even, those will go together like a dream. Now, before we talk about what we can see on there, let's talk about what we can't see. So as I look at this, there is something clearly missing from these two resin parts, and that's air bubbles. Um, uh, you buy other brands like Combrig, for example, um, and you know air bubbles is something you end up having to fill. There's various techniques for doing it, but the resin parts here have none. They are so well done, really, really nice. And this whole surface doesn't have a single uh, blemish on it in terms of air bubbles. Um, in fact, there isn't really a blemish on it at all. All you've got to do is just get rid of these. I'm sure there's a word for them, but I don't know what there is. But this sort of residue from the molding process that you can just take up away there with a very gentle light sand, very fine grit. Um, and that's ready to go. And look at our bilge keels there. Really, really finely done. No great big thick triangles. Really, really lovely. Uh, not broken, not distorted. Really, really quality casting. Very nicely done. And then when we look at our, just get that out of the way, look at our uh, upper hull, which has our decks on. Uh, we can see we've got texturing at the front on the steel deck area there. Um, we've got the capstans already moulded in, and they look really, really nice. Um, we've got nice, correct angle to the breakwater there with the supports already in. And you could argue that the supports are slightly oversized uh, in terms of thickness, but they look right, which is the main thing that you're after. Um, absolutely, totally smooth, totally flat. There's no filling and sanding needed to be done on any of this. Then we've got the raised walkways, which are really nicely done. Nice and crisp, easy to see, easy to paint. Um, and we don't, you know, the tiny details, often on resin kits, these tiny details, you'll find that they that they come out different lengths to get short shot or they've got a bit broken off them because there is an air bubble in them. These are all perfect. Absolutely perfect. Got some lockers there. Um, all totally, totally perfectly shaped. Really, really nice. Very, very well crafted. That is quality moulding. Um, we've got Nice, crisp, sharp. Let me just see. Perfect bout, absolutely spot on. So a little bit of clean up on the mating surfaces and you've got a very nice, easy hull build there. Whichever way you want to do, waterline or not. Okay, that's the hull. So moving on to some of the other larger resin parts, um, we've got um, superstructure here um, and looking at the detail, we've got watertight doors, we've got trunking, it's really well done. We've got all the support structure in there um, and again I can't see any air bubbles at all at the surface. Um, there's one scuttle that's slightly not quite as deep as the others, um, but that is it. I mean, let me just put your drill into that, that's fine. Um, yeah, the um, splinter shields are nice and fine and crisp. 
Um, and then look at this, we've got it's a little bit of flash on it, a little bit of clean up, but you expect that it's a simple scrape it clean job. Um, and you've got the um, little tabs left over from the molding process that you just need to skim off. But other than that, everything is nice and flat and um, really, really good. And let's just see. Let's just see if I, that's my locating holes. Uh, it's not going to fit exactly on, but if I, uh, there you go. So that almost fits perfectly now and that we've not even cleaned the part up. So yeah, really nicely done. Uh, and we've got some very delicate little pipe work coming out of the back there. Got an angle on it. I mean, that's, that's not the easiest thing to cast, but it's such a good job of it. We've got some more superstructure um, and we've got underneath as I look at it, I mean, I can see watertight doors. We've got some form of handrail or something, um, but we've got all the little support gussets underneath molded in. They're all nice and straight. They look really good. Um, the watertight doors have got detail on them. Uh, we've got some hatches and bits and pieces. Um, all these blocks are various types of lockers and painted up and look nice. They, these have a curve on them, can you see on the profile? Have a curve on them. So again, not a single air bubble. A couple of slightly shallow scuttles just want to put a, a, a drill bit in and, and neaten those up. But yeah, really, really nice again. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And we've got another piece of uh, superstructure. Um, this has got things like the um, red and green lamps on. We've actually got, when you look on that, this is the this is the bridge. When you look on that, isn't that lovely? We've got detail textured onto the deck. Um, we've got all the little navigation equipment molded in there. Um, I mean, it just needs painting, um, a, a little bit of uh, railing and bits and pieces on it, and that looks lovely. I, mean, I can see the, the uh, I'm guessing it's a handrail that's running along there. That goes all the way into this recess there. So I can see that when you look in, you can see it all the way down. Watertight doors are nicely done, and again, not a single blemish, bubble, or anything. The quality control, with it being, a, a, I guess, a cottage industry, um, the attention to detail uh, is often better than with the bigger companies. That is perfect in every way. Really nice, really, really nice. This is one of the platforms, and we've got um, lockers and mounting points already molded in um, we've got perfectly square splinter shield in there and quite often these things can distort and they're a bit crooked and not quite straight but this is absolutely perfect we've got watertight doors there at different heights with uh, what look like windows with hatches on not sure we've got um, supports there that perfectly square just need a little bit of clean up underneath as, as you'd expect but otherwise that again is perfect you expect a few challenges when you've got resin parts but I haven't found any yet right we have another platform um, and as you look at the top you can see how perfectly done that is um, yeah very very sweet got a little bit of flash on there but that's nothing I mean, i'm surprised we've not seen more um, and then at the back we've got some lockers and sides we've got watertight doors and trunking um, and it all looks lovely now here if you can see there's a little white mass there that's actually part of the rubber, the rubber mold and you sometimes get that it gets trapped in there and you can see that i can just flick it forward with my knife so that's the right, I'm not going to do it now because I've not got magnifying glasses on, but basically that just needs to be 
pulled out and then you'll find you've got a nice perfectly molded part underneath um, so it's just a little bit of the mold that's that's come away you can see there i can flap it around with my knife blade there but like i said not going to do it now um, but you do sometimes get that um the, the mold gets stuck into the little uh, tiny little holes that have been uh, trying to be molded in and, they, and it rips away so um, yeah it'll be nice to uh, it'll be a nice part behind that it'll be nice and crisp so no worries there so we're now on the smaller resin parts and this first item is the torpedo tubes and as I flip that over you can see how delicately cast they are and yet at the same time totally perfect they're straight um, there's a tiny amount of clean up on them but virtually nothing and there's the parts are so crisp um, you can see torpedo heads in there so you've got a little bit of detail to paint in which is nice just brings the kit to life lovely detail on top um, yeah that's a lovely part and we've got some uh, gun positions uh, these all look the same so very nice I can see as I look at it that the top of the roof just this section here is thinner than the rest so a little bit of care but uh, where the where you've got a sort of a camber on the roof that's very very thin now you are going to have to get in with a knife and just open up the hole for the uh, barrel but that's that's nothing um, and a little bit of clean up underneath the yeah they've all got it in the same position there's a little lump there now I've not got my magnifying glasses on so I don't know whether some of it's supposed to be there but clearly needs a little bit of clean up I think um, as it's longer than the location point um, yeah uh, and a, a little scrape and that will be really nice so we have three of those, They're all moulded to the same standard, no issues with any of them other than just a little bit of seam clean up. Um, and let's have a look, we've got the funnel, which has got some pipes already moulded on, they look nice. Again, a little bit of clean up on the seams there, um, very, very uh, fine grit just to tidy up that edge otherwise it's perfect there's no air bubbles and we haven't found a single air bubble that we've had to fill yet and that that's almost unheard of in, in resin kits so yeah that's that's a lovely lovely part then we've got um, a radar and look at how <laughs> detailed that is we've got surface uh, detail we've got what's clearly some form of radar or something on each side and look how delicate they are that is so well done it's really nice um, lots of detail on the front there um, and again no imperfections just a little bit of seam clean up, up as you'd expect and even that's minor lovely uh, we've got that's our Bofus platform very very delicate lots of tiny detail on there and all perfectly done really really nice then we've got three ships boats so dinghy has a bit of flash on it but that's nothing um, it's a smooth hull so i don't know whether that's right or whether it would have been clinker um, but uh, we've got the keel on it um, so given its size and put some photo etch on it and some or some bits and pieces will look lovely um, same with this now this has the the rudder and the tiller moulded on and we've got planking detail at the bottom no horrid ejector pin marks because it's resin um, and 
little bit of flash around the edges to clean off and then that's it. Really lovely. And then last is our covered bow, our launch, which uh, a little bit of sanding on the transom. Other than that, is really nice. You'd have to paint the windows in, um, but we do have some photo etch to go on there. Um, but the shape is all good. Lovely. Okay, so we noticed in the instructions that we needed some uh, plastic rod, and Atlantic Models has gone to the length of, uh, of actually supplying you that plastic rod. Now, I've had resin kits where you've got to supply your own wire and stuff for masts. So that's a really, really nice touch. Brilliant. So next we're going to look at the white metal parts. Now if you're not familiar with white metal or uh, multimedia parts, then uh, you might be um, mistaken to think that some of these parts look a little bit rough around the edges, but this is all normal for white metal. So. White metal is quite a soft material, it's easy to manipulate um, and um, very easy to clean up as a result. It's also easy to damage, so you do need to um, handle it with care. Um, the upshot of the metal parts is you get some very, very nice detail. And if you look at these rafts as a case in point, you can see the detail on them is absolutely stunning. So. What we need to do is remove them from their um, little blocks here, where the casting blocks, um, and just clean up any flash, um, which is easily done with, um, with a seam scraping tool or a, a knife blade, uh, and, and then you simply paint them up, and it's as simple as that. So a little bit of work. Um, this is the area of the kit where you'll do most of your clean up on the white metal, um, but they are actually really really nice the other thing that you can come across with uh, white metal parts is bent um, bent parts particularly gun barrels um, some people might be um, tempted to swap these out with brass barrels and I would totally understand that if they're available but if you have a look at these these are all perfectly straight um, really, really nice, and there's lots of nice detail on there. A little bit of clean up on the back end where they've been cast, but they are really lovely, and the detail will pop out once you get some paint on those. Really, really nice. So, those are the guns that will get mounted in the little resin um, turrets that we saw uh, a moment ago. So then we've got some secondary armament and I can see that we've got one ever so slightly bent barrel. Now that's not an issue. The material is so soft that you can just tease it back into place um, and get it where you want it to be. Might take a little bit of work or in this case it might not. That's uh, nice and straight now I think. Yep, yeah, uh, simple as that. Um, so yeah, a little bit of clean up. You've got a nice little tab on the bottom there that you can paint, and then you can simply cut through that with a razor saw or, or a very sharp uh, knife, and that will look stunning once you've got some paint on it. So we've got one, one, two, three, four of those. Um, then we've got the, I forget what they were called now. These are the um, parts that go on when the ship gets an upgrade. It's an anti-submarine weaponry of some type. So they look really nice as well. See the barrels sticking out of the launchers or whatever they are. Very nice. Uh, this part we've got uh, the rudder. It's 
So a little bit of clean up on the top along the seam and that's it. Then we've got what looks like uh, anti-aircraft gun, one slightly bent barrel, but we'll sort that when we clean it up. Uh, and then some form of tube, perfectly round, a little bit of a seam. Um, and these clean up really easily with um, uh, a metal file uh, to get rid of the worst and then um, fine abrasive will do the job nicely. The A-frames for the uh, propeller shafts are nice and not deformed, nice and everything's in the at the correct angle sometimes these can get a bit bent and deformed as well but these are perfect um, and once you've cleaned the seam off will look really good we've got some they look like mounts for something but you can see how crisp the molding is so a quick whip round with a light abrasive get that seam off in the middle and you've got some perfect parts have some form of, I think that's a radar, yeah I think that's a radar unit of some type and then we have the propellers and white metal propellers are some of the best propellers at this scale that you ever see. Um, brass ones tend to be uh, a little thicker um, but look at look at how thin the blade is on that. You can see why they choose white metal for that. Um, and it's not as brittle as resin would be, so it's a really nice choice. Beautiful shape to the propeller. So just a little bit of clean up and you're done. Like I say, that's the area you're going to spend most of your work on in terms of clean up. So there we have it one lovely resin kit what are my first impressions well let's compare it to other resin kits that you've seen and that i've built um, on the channel so far so we have the osmods um hms or um hmas um duchess um in one six hundred scale that we looked at last year and then we built that um the AJM Models um, A-Class Destroyer, um, which they marketed as, as incorrectly as HMS Argent and HMS Acasta, and I correctly built as HMS Anthony. Um, so if we think about those two kits, um, when it comes to the resin, I had real issues with the AJM Models um, resin. Now, uh, I know the scale is different. They were working on, at 1700 scale, but uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the actual um, large bits of resin, the, the um, waterline hull, the funnels, the superstructure, well, we had all sorts of issues. We had air bubbles. We had it be, the hull being bowed uh, and, and wasn't flat, so you had to sand it so it was flat. You had really poor casting of the detail so um, some of the scuttles had all but vanished you had um, a bow line that was that was crooked and needed sanding sanding straight which meant also sanding it back and uh, you had all sorts of imperfections in the surface of the resin um, and that was just the hull um, we had all sorts of other other issues with it and then we had um, photo etch so albeit it was a much smaller scale um, the photo etch was was very very difficult uh, at times to get it to fold correctly and it wasn't just the size that was the issue it was the way that the etch was was designed um, if you think about the Oz scale modeling uh, uh, the Osmods kit um, the photo etch was much more basic um, it wasn't as well presented and you can go back and have a look at that first impressions video and compare for yourself um, and the resin although it was um, much better than the AJM uh, models resin um, we still had air bubbles and bits and pieces in and 
that's quite typical. Um, although we've not looked at a Combrig kit on this channel, I have certainly built one before, um, and they didn't even supply the um, the uh, metal rod that you needed for masts and bits and pieces. You needed to source all that yourself. Bonkers. So you didn't get a complete kit. With the AGM models resin kit, a lot of the finer parts like gun barrels and bits and pieces were done in resin. And as a result, many of them were snapped and broken. Uh, there was a lot of damaged parts in there, even though they'd gone to some uh, level of care to protect them. A lot of them had just got broken because they were too small, too brittle. What Atlantic models have done with this is they have considered that. The resin cast parts are to the highest standards I have ever seen in the resin kits I have built. There is no one does it better than Atlantic Models. When it comes to the photo etch, well, um, they're, they're globally famous amongst ship modellers. Uh, White Ensign Models uh, photo etch is well renowned, has a great reputation, and Peter Hall was behind that. So we know that the photo etch is great. This is not a massive model so there's not tons and tons of photo etch um, if you ever did a uh, white ensigns 1350 hms hood that came with quite a lot of photo etch um, and it took me about two years to get that kit together um, but the photo etch is really well done and there's a balance between fine detail and um, okay to work with and not okay to work with and I think the balance is right on the photo etch that you get from Atlantic models um, it, it covers off all the main items and they give you options like ladders and extra railings and extra lengths of chain so you've got lots of flexibility um, and then they're using the white metal where you need something um, that's not as brittle as the resin so gun barrels in resin don't work they really don't they, they always end up snapped or warped uh, where white metal is easier to manipulate, soft enough to work with, hard enough to keep its um, shape. So I think they can that it's a very well considered kit. Um, and the fact that they've put in the little bits of uh, plastic rod that you need um, is a really nice uh, attention to detail touch. The uh, decals. Um, all right, they're not going to be the, the, the best decals in terms of how much um, film you get and you might want to trim them up a little bit, but I have never had any issues with them settling, breaking up or anything like that. So you won't have any problems with it. And you're getting things like depth markers and bits and pieces that a lot of manufacturers don't bother with. You know, even the big boys, Tamiya, don't, don't bother giving you depth markers. You, you know, you just get flax. What's all that about? So for me, um, this is almost everything you need in the box for a kit. There may be one or two other decals you want to add, warning signs um, and bits and pieces like that, all of them available from Atlantic Models. So for me, um, this is a beautiful kit. Um, the build time won't be excessive because you've got um, big parts that just need a, a small amount of cleanup painting and placing um, most of your cleanup is on your white metal parts and I think the thing that will take the most time out of everything in this kit is actually doing your background research um, typically these kits go together um, really quite well so I think this is a beautiful kit and I can't wait to get stuck into it at some point um, let's talk about Atlantic models kits more generally whilst we've got one in front of us um, the only limitation of Atlantic model kits really is they concentrate on a period or in, in time. So it tends to be post-war. Now, if you're into your post-war, Cold War, Falklands War, that type of that type of era, then there's lots and lots of ships there to uh, fill your interest. Um, it's got all sorts of uh, different types of uh, frigates, destroyers and, and the like, um, some very, very nice kits. Um, but you're not going to be getting much from other periods of time. That's not what they focus on. 
Um, having said that, their photo etch um, does go beyond that, and a lot of the old Airfix 1600 um, stuff, for example, is covered off in their range of photo etch. Um, and often, if why Ensign models do it, Atlantic models might do a more up-to-date version of it. So uh, the photo etch that you saw me using when we built the Type 45 destroyer um, from Airfix, which had come from Atlantic models, it is a more up-to-date version than the same etch that you'd get from white ensign models. So my tip is, if you're looking for some photo etch or you're looking for a post-war ship, then have a look at and see what Atlantic models has first. Um, I think their kits are the very best uh, on the market when it comes to resin. Um, the other thing we need to talk about, of course, is price. So at the time of recording this, it is uh, February 2022 as I record this, although um, it's April when you're watching this. Um, this is um, retailing at 96 90 uh, plus postage. Um, if you go onto the website, it clearly says whether he's got them in stock or not, and you can drop him an email uh, and, he'll, and he'll tell you when he's got bits and pieces um, in stock if it's on back order with his uh, his supply chain um, so you can definitely buy a 1350 scale kit um, for less money than that um, the, the extra cost is the cost of the materials particularly the resin um, used in this so I understand because of the cost that resin kits are not for everyone um, but if you've got the money and you've got the interest in the subject, um, and uh, at, then Atlantic models kits, I think, are some of the very best that you can then you can buy. So there you have it. I hope that was useful, informative, um, and um, especially if you're not aware of Atlantic models, go and have a look at the website. They've got lots on there. Um, that they even do. Uh, um, some third party stuff like uh, master barrels and bits and pieces um, so yeah thanks for looking in enjoy your modeling and i will see you very very soon